In this lesson, we will look at some applications of inverse trig functions. So at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to model and evaluate real-life application problems using the inverse trig functions. Let's start with a basic problem that you might remember from prior math classes. In this example, you are mapping out a hiking trip to a new spot in the state park near your home. On your map, you know that you are supposed to go on a course which ends with you having moved 2.5 miles east and 3 miles south. Your map with the start and end points is shown here. Now your job is to calculate the angle that you need to walk with respect to due east. Can you find a way to calculate this angle using inverse trig functions? So you might remember that if we're using these trig functions, we need to draw a right triangle. Based on our data, it says that we have to go 2.5 miles east. So if we here at the start and we walked east, we would be walking this way. And then we need to go three miles south down to the finish line. We can connect our route and then create a right triangle and label the sides. Here we have 2.5 and here we have 3. We know we have a right triangle because we made it that way. The question becomes then, what is this angle here? And we'll label it with a theta. At what angle do we need to walk in order to get from start to finish? If we look at what we have and we are starting here, then we know we have an opposite and we have an adjacent. The trig function that addresses opposite and adjacent is our tangent. We would then write our function like this. The tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent or 3.0 over 2.5. How can we solve that? Well, we know that if we take the inverse, we can find the angle. All we need to do is multiply both sides by the inverse tangent. We know that if we take the inverse of the tangent here, we'll just be left with theta. So theta will equal the inverse tangent of 3.0 over 2.5. We can put this in our calculator in order to solve. Make sure when you put it in your calculator that you're in degree mode, since we want to know the angle in degrees. Make sure that you go to mode and check this. Right now I'm in radian mode. Now I'm in degree mode. Now we could have skipped some steps. We understand inverse functions, so I could have originally have written this as the inverse tangent because I know I'm trying to find an angle of 3.0 over 2.5. And then I would have found that that was 50.2 degrees. Let's try one that will cause us to think a little bit more. In this example, it says in the main concourse of a local arena, there are several viewing win or viewing screens that are available to watch so that you do not miss any of the action on the ice. The bottom of one screen is three feet above eye level and the screen itself is seven feet high. The angle of vision, which we call the inclination, is formed by looking at both the bottom and top of the screen. Sketch a picture to represent this problem. Sometimes that's the most difficult part is actually sketching the picture. So in this case, they say that the bottom of one screen is three feet above eye level. So this is the bottom of the screen right here. And the screen itself is seven feet high. So if I'm sitting here where theta is, I'm looking up at this big screen TV. Here's the bottom, and this is the screen itself. The angle of vision is formed by looking at both the bottom and top of the screen. So that's this theta sub 2 right here. It's not the entire angle because that would be assuming that I looked from all the way down here at the ground to the top. But this problem says that the angle of inclination is formed by looking at both the bottom and top of the screen. So here's my image. Notice that I've labeled this distance from where I'm sitting to the actual height of the screen here all the way down to the ground as x 
I've labeled each of my sections according to what the problem said. Now I'm ready to solve whatever they asked me to solve. So in B it says calculate the measure of the angle of vision that results from looking at the bottom and then the top of the screen. So in other words, I'm trying to calculate theta sub 2. This problem though is also asking at what distance from the screen does the maximum value for the angle of vision occur? So I also need to find x. So how can we do this using inverse functions? Well let's start with what we know. We know that theta sub 2, which is what we're trying to find, is going to be equal to the whole function of the, of the entire right triangle. So in other words, the tangent of theta. Now why am I using tangent? Think about what we know. We know opposite and we're trying to find adjacent. So that's the tangent. So we know that the opposite is 10 and the adjacent is x. Because these are our two sides that we're using, I'm using tangent. So, in order to find an angle, I can take the tangent of the whole thing and I can subtract the tangent of a piece of it. If I subtract the tangent of theta 1, I'll be left with, if I take the inverse, I'll just be left with the angle sub 2 here. So, look at this. Compare it to the problem, make sure you understand what we're doing. We're taking the whole and we're subtracting the piece and we're coming up with the piece we need. Now remember I said how can we solve this using inverse functions. Since we're finding angles, we know we have to use an inverse function. So think about how we can turn these into angles. Before we do that then, let's go ahead and define what each of these is. We know that the tangent of theta, we just said was 10 over x. How about the tangent of theta sub 1? In that case, the tangent of theta sub 1 is going to be equal to 3 over x. Now we're ready to plug these back in, but with the inverse. So theta sub 2 is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of 10 over x minus the inverse tangent of 3 over x. So if you think about what we've just done, we said that in order to find this angle, the value of this angle, we need to take the value of the whole angle and subtract the value of this little angle. Okay. This looks very difficult to solve, so what we can do is we can graph this because we have a y and we have an x. And by graphing this, we can determine our y, which will be our angle, and we can also determine x, which would be this distance in order to maximize it. So in your calculator, make sure you're on degree mode, and you can plug this directly into your y equals. After plugging it in, I end up with a graph that looks like this. What we're trying to then find is the maximum value here, the maximum angle, which is our y value, and that will then tell us the distance, which is our x value. In your calculator, you can use your max function, which is near the top. If you have a TI-84, it's under calc. So if you hit second calc, you'll see that you have a max function. So from my calculator, I know that in order to maximize, I would need to have a distance here of 5.48 feet, and I would get an angle here of theta sub 2 of 32.58. And that concludes our lesson today on application of inverse trig functions. So again, in order to model and evaluate, one of the most important things is to draw an accurate sketch, and then think about how you might use technology to help you solve the models that you create.